Hey everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at the ViewPress Tutorial 9 Styling the Homepage Post. Alright, so in this video we're going to be looking at two types of styling files. So we're going to look at the palette.style file and the index.style file. So we're going to take a look at what the palette.style file is used for. And we're going to look at the predefined styles provided by the default theme. And then we're going to get into how to create the palette.style file. And then we're going to do the same thing for the index.style file. So we're going to see what it's used for. We're going to take a look at the predefined styles provided by the default theme. And then we're going to get into how to create the index.style file. And then we're going to take a look at how to override the styles provided by both the palette.style and the index.style files. And then we will get into how to implement the styling in the palette.style file and the index.style file for our home page. So we're going to look at how to override the predefined styles and then how to add some of our own global styling. All right, so the next step that we're going to be taking in the developing of the blog is to learn how to override the palette.style file and the index.style file. And this is going to allow us to add that global styling to the blog. Now, like I said, to do this, we're going to first discuss what the index.style and palette.style files are used for. Then we're going to take a look at the predefined styles provided by the default theme. And then we're going to discuss that overriding priority of the files. And then finally, we're going to implement what we learned about by styling the home page of the blog. Now, you want to make sure that you have your local development server up and running. It should be running at local host port 8080. And this will allow you to see the changes that we'll be making to the site. And if they're not, if the changes aren't appearing, then try restarting your local development server. So you can see over here, let me just refresh. Yep. So there you go. I have the site up and running over here. I just have the home page open. And then down here in this terminal, I have the local development server running on localhost port 8080. All right. So. Now we want to get into the palette.style file. So the palette.style file is used to define global styling variables and to override the predefined styling variables, which in our case are being provided by the default theme. Now, here are some of the predefined styling variable, variables available to us to use and override in your site. So this is the predefined palette.style file provided by the default theme. So you have different colors right here. So you have an accent color. And then that's the variable name. And then that's the value of it. You have text color, border color, and then some other colors down here that are already set. You have a nav bar height, um, a sidebar width, and then you have some responsive breakpoints down here uh, for this narrow, mobile, and then a mobile narrow. All right. Now, we'll be using and overriding some of these predefined styling variables as well as defining our own styling variables as we develop the blog. Now here's a link to the full palette.style file. So you can take a look right here on the GitHub for the full palette.style file right there. And you can take a look at that if you're interested. And then you can also view the full file by navigating to your node modules directory. And then you can take a look inside of this path all the way down to this file right here. And then that will show you the palette.style file provided by the default theme. Now, just little note down here is that you should only define variables in the palette.style file because it will be imported at the end of the root stylus config file. So this means several file files will use it. So once you define your styling variables here, they will be duplicated multiple times. All right. So you want to only define your variables in the palette.style file. All right. So now let's get into how to create the palette.style file. All right. So now that we have, you know, a decent understanding of what the palette.style file is used for, and we looked at the predefined palette.style global styling variables. Now we're going to create the file by first creating a styles directory in the theme directory. All right, so if we come over here, what we want to do, and let me just open up another terminal and you can see I'm in the Code Monkeys blog tutorials repository on the tutorial nine branch. So if we list out here, we can see we have our docs directory and then inside of there, we wanna go into .viewpress and then inside of there, we want to go into our theme. And then inside of here is where we want to make 
our styles directory. All right, so now we list down here, you can see we have our styles directory right there. So after doing this, the docs directory for your site should now look something like this. So you have that docs directory, dot view press directory, and then we have our theme directory with that styles directory now. Now after creating the styles directory, we can now create that palette.style file inside of it like this. All right, so now over here we can just, we'll just touch and then we'll do palette.style and then we'll cd into styles. Well, actually, let me go back because you can see that I made the palette.style file here. So let me just move that to the styles directory. So now if we cd into styles, and if we list out, now you can see we have that palette.style file inside of our styles directory. All right, so the directory structure for your site is now going to look something like this. Docs directory, dot view press directory, our theme directory, and then the styles directory with that palette.style file. Now, you also have the option of using an alternative directory structure. So if you recall from the ViewPress tutorial for directory structure post, you also have the option of creating your palette.style file in the file in location. So you could create it in your .viewpress directory inside of a styles directory and then make your palette.style file right there. All right, but we're going to be making our styles inside of our theme directory. All right, now we'll be updating the palette.style file later on in this post, but first we're going to take a look at the index.style file. All right, so this is the index.style file. Let me make this bigger. Now, the index.style file is used to add global styles as well as override predefined styles, which in our case are being provided by the default theme. So even though it's a stylus file, you can also use normal CSS syntax if you prefer. All right. Now we won't discuss the predefined index.style file in detail right now. What we've provided down here is just meant to be a reference in case you want to look for a specific style you want to override or if you're interested in learning more about the predefined styling. All right, so this is the predefined index.style file which you can override and add your own styles to. All right, so this is the whole file right here. And then one style to just make note of right here is and this HTML and body right here, it has a background color. So we'll be overriding that style later on in the tutorial. But you can take a look at all of this code if you are interested. Now, we've also provided a link to the index.style file right here. So you can take a look at it on GitHub as well. And here is the path to the file in your project. So it'll be in your node modules directory. And then you can just go through all these other directories to get to the file in your project. Now, as we develop the blog, we'll be using and overriding some of these predefined styles as well as defining our own styles. Now, quick note here on importing and requiring stylus and CSS files. So you may have noticed in the index.style file that we're we are requiring other files. So for example, we have up at the top there, we have that at require.config. And we'll discuss how to import and require .style and .css files in a future post. All right, so now let's get on to creating the index.style file. So now that we have a good understanding of the index.style file, you know what it's used for, we've provided you with that, where to find the predefined index.style file. We're going to create the file for the blog inside of the styles directory that we previously created and the docs directory for your site should now look something like this afterwards. You have the docs, the dot view press directory, the theme directory, and then that styles directory, which now has that index.style file. So if we come back over here to our terminal, and then what we want to do is we want to touch, and then we'll do index.style, and then I'll just clear this, and then we'll list out. You can see now we have our index.style and our palette.style files. All right, so that's how you would create the index.style file. Now, again, you have the option of using that alternative directory structure. So if you recall, again, from the ViewPress tutorial for directory structure post, you can also create your index.style file in your .viewpress directory and then inside of a styles directory right there. Now, we're going to be creating all of our styles inside of our theme directory. All right, and now we'll be updating the index.style file we just created later on in the post, but we're first going to take a look 
at the overriding priority. All right, so this is the overriding priority. All right, so this is how you override um, the palette.style and index.style files, and they follow a certain overriding priority. All right, so to start with, we'll look at the palette.style file. So the user's palette.style file, which is located in the .viewpress slash style slash palette.style, that's where that's the path to your palette.style right there. That has a higher priority than the themes palette.style file, which would be located in a theme directory and then inside of the styles directory. And then you would find that palette.style file. So the themes palette.style file has a higher priority than any predefined palette.style file, which is located again in the node modules right there in the case of the default theme. So this means a theme can define its own global styling variables and a user can override them as they see fit. All right, so here's an example of a global styling variable defined in each type of palette.style file, which should make this concept a little bit clearer. All right, so down here we have our predefined variable, which is inside of our node modules right here. So if you had a predefined variable of accent color with this value right here, this would be you know, provided by the default theme, for example, or whatever um, theme you may be using. And then you could have your own theme that you define. So this would be inside of your .viewpress theme directory. And then you'd have your styles directory and then that palette.style file. And then you could have an accent color um, global styling variable with this value right here. And then a user could make that .viewpress directory. And then they could create a styles directory directly inside of the .viewpress directory. And then they could have their palette.style file. And then they could make their global styling variable for the accent color to be equal to this value. And here the final value for the accent color will be the one provided by the user since it has the highest priority. All right, now you'll notice that we're not using the user palette.style file. So as we develop the blog, we won't be using the user's palette.style file located in that .viewpress styles directory. We'll just be using the themes palette.style file, which is located in our theme directory inside of the styles directory. And that's going to allow us to override any predefined variables. All right. But if you had that, you know, user um, styles directory right there and that user palette.style file, that would have the highest priority right out of all of your, your styling directories in your palette.style files in your project. All right, so the now let's talk about the index.style. So the same overriding priority applies to the index.style file as well. So a user's index.style file, which is located in that .viewpress directory inside of the styles directory, has a higher priority than the themes index.style file, which would be located in your theme directory in the styles directory. And the themes index.style file has a higher priority than any predefined index.style file, which is located again in this node modules path right here in the case of the default theme. So this means a theme can define its own global styles and a user can override them as they see fit. Now, both the users index.style file and the themes index.style file, they will get generated into the file into the final CSS file used in the site, but the user style gets generated later, which is what gives it a higher priority than the theme style. All right, so here's an example of a style defined in a user's index.style and a style defined in a themes index.style file to make this concept clear. So right here we have our theme style, so inside of our theme directory, and then we have our styles directory right there. And then if we have this example style right here where we're just setting a font size of one rem to this class example style, and then we could have a user style in the .viewpress styles directory. And again, here we just have that .example style class and then now we're giving it a font size of 1.25 rem. And here's what the final CSS looks like for the generated site. So right here we have our, our example style class with that font size of one rem from the theme directory. And then we inside of that styles directory. And then in the dot view press directory inside of the styles directory, we have our example style class with the font size of 1.25 rem. So notice how the user style comes after the theme style in the final CSS file. So th this is what gives the user style a higher priority than the theme style. Now again, as we develop the blog, we won't be using the user's index.style file located in that 
.viewpress styles directory. Instead, we're just going to be using the themes index.style file, which is located in the theme directory and then inside of that styles directory. And that's going to allow us to override any predefined styles. All right, so now that we have a good understanding of how overriding works for both the palette.style and index.style files, we're now ready to override some predefined styling and add our own styling to the home page of the blog. All right, so now let's get into the home page style. So to start, the home page styling will be overriding and adding global styling variables to the palette.style file. And these global styling variables will then be used in the index.style file as well as other files as we continue the development of the blog. Now, when overriding and adding styles to your site, you can look at the predefined styling files to determine what properties you need to override. So those predefined styling files that we talked about before. And then along with that, you can, along with looking at those predefined styling files, you can also inspect your browser, go to the elements tab, and then locate a tag or class that you want to override. All right, so that's another way that you can look for any potential predefined style that you would like to override. And we'll be demonstrating how to do that in a little bit. Now, you want to be sure to add each block of code below one at a time to your project, then view the changes in the browser to get a better understanding of what each block is responsible for. All right, now, if you're developing your own site, then you can check out these useful resources for coming up with color schemes and palettes for your own site. So we have provided some resources down here if you're interested in them. And if you don't feel comfortable with the CSS discussed below, then you can take a look at this resource right here to get a better understanding of CSS. All right, and then you can also view the palette.style and the index.style files in the tutorial nine branch of the CodeMonkeys blog tutorials repository. So you can take a look right here and you can also get the files right there. All right. So now let's override and add some global styling variables to the palette.style file. All right. So here's what the palette.style file looks like after overriding some of the predefined global styling variables and adding our own global styling variables. All right. So if we come over here and what I'm going to do is just close out this terminal and then I'm going to look for the palette.style file. So right here, and then I'm just going to copy over this code. All right. And then what we want to do is format. And then we'll just save this file. Now, right here, you can see that the background color is this global styling variable is going to be used as the background color of the home page as well as the whole blog. Then we have the accent color and that's used to color the action button on the home page and to add styling to internal external links. So if we come over here and if we zoom in and then let me see if I restart the development server over here and then if we refresh. Okay. So now you can see that we have that accent color is now right up here that's being used to now style this action button as well as style these internal external links up here which you can't really see that well right now but that's that accent color already being used and then we have the text color and that's used to color the text on the home page as well as the nav bar text and other text throughout the blog so if you come back over here you can see the the text on the blog is now changed and you can't really see it just yet um, since we need to change that background color. And then we have a border color and that's used to style the border in the feature section as well as the border in the nav bar and other borders throughout the blog. So you can see over here that this border color is now changed to the border color that we set there. And we also have a dark border color, and that will be used to style the border and box shadow around the main card on the home page. All right, so this is what it looks like just after defining the global styling variables in our, in our palette.style file. Now, some of these styles get automatically updated since ViewPress was using the accent color beforehand, and now we're just overriding it and giving it a new value, and it was using that text color beforehand, and now we're just giving it a new value to use and then some of these values, like the background color and dark border color, those are our own global styling variables. So we need to, in the index.style file, use them for them to then show up on the site. 
All right, so now let's get into the index.style file. So we're gonna start by overriding the background color in the HTML tag. So if we come over here, and then if we open up our index.style file, and then if we just copy this over, and then let's save this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna update the background color of the content below the footer component to be the color specified by the background color global styling variable that we just added in our palette.style file. So if you come over here, and if we inspect this page down here, oh, actually, let me just leave that off. So then you can see down here that this background color for that HTML tag, that just gives it this background color right down here. All right, so now if we go inside, if we look, you can see this background color right here, which was provided by the default theme is now being overridden by this background color that we just set in our palette.style file and then that we are using now in our index.style file. All right. Now, next we're gonna override the background color in the body tag. So let me just copy this line right here and save the file. And then you can see now we have a background color for the home page of the site. So you can see that now the whole home page of the site, except for the nav bar up here, is now this background color that we specified in the palette.style file. So if you inspect, if you come to the body, you'll see that we used to have a background color defined down here to just be white. And now we have a background color up here that, is, that has the value that we set in the palette.style file. All right, so now let's take, and like we said, this updates the background color of the body of the site to be the color specified by the background color global styling variable. All right, so now we're going to update the padding around the main tag, which we'll select using the home class. All right, so what we want to do is we just want to add this to site right there. So save this. And this just gets rid of the padding. So let's just make this bigger. And this just gets rid of the padding around this main tag right here, which has a class of home. So now you can see it has that padding. Well, let me see if I move myself out of the way. Now you can see it has that padding of zero down there. All right, so now that we've set that, so this updates the padding of the main tag that has that with the class of home to be zero on all sides. And now we're going to update the styles for the hero class, which is given to the header tag inside of the main tag and contains the logo, the title, the description, and the action button. So if we take a look over here, can see that we have that main tag and then we have this header tag which has a class of hero and then you can see that inside of there inside of this header tag we have our image which is that full code monkeys logo and then we have our h1 tag right here which is the site title and then we have our p tag right here with our description and then we have our action button down here which has a link to the topics page and then it has the value of learn to code like a monkey. All right, so that is what the header tag looks like. So that's the contents of it, where it's located on the page. And yeah, so it's inside of the main tag and then you can see that header tag with the class of hero. Now these are the styles that we want to add. So if we just copy these styles and then let's go over here and then what we will do is we will just paste that in and then we'll save this file. So down here, we are just setting the margin left to be two rem. So this is gonna add a margin of two rem to the left of the header tag. And then we have margin right two rem and that adds a margin of two rem to the right of the header tag. So if you come over here and if you take a look right here, you can see that we have the margin on the left and the margin on the right is now two rem. So I get out of the way 
you can come down here, you see margin left two rem, margin right two rem. All right, and now we have a border top of that 0.125 rem, and it's a solid border, and it has the border color. So this adds a border to the top of the, oh, we are in the wrong section there. Um, but you can see down here that we have our border, which is 0.125 rem, and it's solid, and then it has that dark border color. So this adds a border around the header tag with a thickness of 0.125 rem with a style of solid and has a color with that dark border color, which we defined in that palette.style file. So if you come over here, you can see that we now have a border around our header tag. So that's this right here is now this border that we have. And again, let me just move myself out of the way. Um, yes. Up there is probably fine. Um, so you can see we have that border right there of 0 0.125 rem. It's a solid border. And then it has that dark border um, global styling variable that we set. All right, and then we have a box shadow. So this adds a box shadow around the header tag. So if you come over here, and if we go to our header tag, then you can see we have this box shadow right here. And this is this little shadow that you see around the, uh, the outside of our main card on the site right here. And then we have the border radius. And this adds a border radius to the header tag border. So that's where we get these, this uh, radius right here applied to the border. It's what curves this right here. And you can see this value right down here is being set in the header tag. And then we have our margin bottom. So this adds a margin bottom to our header tag. So you can see that margin bottom right there. And the value right there for that. And then we just add a padding of two rem around the header tag. So this is just that green right there that you see is the padding. All right, so that is the styles that we will add, that we've added to the hero class on our homepage there. Now, if you're interested, here is a resource for the CSS box shadow property. So if you want to learn how that works, you can take a look right here at this link. All right. And finally, we're going to update the styles for the features class. And this is going to, which is given to the div tag inside of the header tag and contains the learn code and crush text. All right. So this is the div tag that we're talking about. So right here and this div tag, you see, so this div tag isn't inside of the header tag. So that's a, a typo there. So I'll fix that later. Um, but this div class is on the same level as that header tag right there. It's inside of the main tag. All right. So, and that contains the learn code and crush. So it has the features and then it has for each individual feature. If we scroll down, you can see as the learn, the code, and then the crush right there. So that should say main tag right there. And then we have this index.style file. So these are the styles that we want to add. So if we come over here, and if we paste that in, we save the file. So now we've added all of these styles right there to our index.style file. All right, and what we have here is we have that margin left of two rem. So that adds a margin of two rem to the left of that div tag with that features class. So if you come over here, if we go to the features class, you can see that we have that margin left of two rem. So that's that value right there. And then we also have that margin right of two rem. So we also set that on that div tag right there. And then we have a border top of 0 0.125 rem and it's a solid border. And we're using that border color variable that we set in the palette.style file. So this adds a border to the to the top of the to the top of the div tag with a thickness of 0 0.125 rem with a style solid and has that color, that border color that we define in that palette.style file. So if we come over here, you can see on our div with that features class and you see, make that even just a little bit bigger. And then you can see we have that 
that border right there so that border top and then we have it the same thing for the border bottom so this adds a border to the bottom of the div tag with that thickness of 0.125 rem that style of solid and it has a color of that border color we defined in the palette.style file so right here is that border bottom so this is the border bottom that's the border top that we defined right there and then we have text aligned center and this is going to horizontally align the text in each div tag with a class of feature that are inside of the div tag with a class of features so this is this class right here this feature class inside of this features class up here so if you come over here you can see that we have this div tag right here with the class of features and then inside of there we have our div tag with the class of feature for the learn the learn code and then the crush text right there and what we're doing here is we are aligning we are using this text align property and then we're giving it a value of center and that's going to horizontally align the text for us so if we come over here you can see that we have this property right here of text align center all right and we're doing that for each of those div tags inside of there with a class of feature and then we are giving a font size of 1.4 rem and that's going to set a font size of 1.4 rem for the h2 tags that are inside of the div tag with a class of feature so you can see right here we have our feature class right there and then inside of that we have the h2 tag and then for those h2 tags we'll be setting a font size of 1.4 rem so if you come over here we have our h2 tag right here and then we have a font size of 1.4 rem and then we're setting that for each h2 tag right here in the feature section all right so this is what our home page now it looks like after adding this styling to it. So you can see that, you know, we have this, this background color. Now we now have this main card with a border radius, a border, that shadow on it. We have our action button now uses that accent color. Our text is now using that text color that we defined in the pal.style file. And then we've also, you know, changed the text color for the nav bar up here by using that text color. Um, global styling variable that we set in the palette.style file and then you can see that you also have an accent color up there as well and the border color we've adjusted and then we've adjusted some margins and paddings as well now down here for the next steps that um, you may have noticed the main card on the home page is being covered by the nav bar so right up here this main card right here is being covered by the nav bar um, so in the next tutorial, we'll be fixing this issue as well as applying some hover effects to the logo and to the box shadow around the main card on the home page. So when you go to hover over this, it will, will have a box shadow effect and then it will also move this logo right there. All right, so that's what we'll be doing in the next, in the next video and we will see you there.